And this is a video I wanted to make for a while, especially because L.I. Joe, if you guys don't know who L.I. Joe is, super sick, crazy Street Fighter player. But uh, a lot of people didn't know he got a lot of his start in MK. A huge MK player back in the day played a crazy UMK3. So, with that said, we'll get started. So, yeah. Sorry, chat. I'm going to be talking a lot too, so I know I might get distracted by the chat. And, like, like I said, this is just going to be like a legacy. So, yeah, if you haven't seen L.I. Joe's video on MK on uh, how he got his start right there, uh, it's pretty cool. But right now, it's going to be the Unruly Legacy. So. Let's get started. What's up, guys? It's the Molina Legacy, but, but first, we are going to do the Unruly Legacy. Um, and that is my Mortal Kombat Legacy. I want to give a big shout out to L.I. Joe. He made this video a long time ago. He made it before MK11 came out, and he talked about his Mortal Kombat Legacy. And uh, it was a really cool video. It talked about how him like going to the arcade days and his dad driving him to arcades and stuff like that. It was really cool. So it was a video that I wanted to do for a while. So for this Molina legacy, we're going to talk about my legacy and how I got in Mortal Kombat and what like how I got my favorite characters, how I got into the game but I'll go ahead and take off my mask for now but with that said um we're gonna start way before even Mortal Kombat because I was always a big Street Fighter fan before Mortal Kombat there was Street Fighter and um I was a I was a fan of that I remember as a young kid I went to an arcade once and I saw Street Fighter 1 and there were people playing it I'm like oh this is kind of cool they're fighting each other but I was really young at the time, so I'm like, yeah. And then I remember later on, uh, Mortal Kombat 2, and I'm gonna comment, Street Fighter 2 comes up in the scene and arcades are going nuts and all the bigger kids are playing and I'm seeing cool characters like Blanca and all this stuff and I'm like, damn, this looks awesome. And I became a big fan of Street Fighter. And um, I remember as a kid, um, like wishing I could beat up bullies with Street Fighter moves. And uh, going back, I remember when Street Fighter Turbo came out, and or Champion, one of the ones I'm, you know, uh, where you could finally select the same characters and pick the boss characters, and I remember that being a huge deal. And um, most of the arcades I played were at 7-Elevens and donut shops. That's where they were a lot in the West Coast. I didn't really have to go to major arcades to go play Street Fighter in Mortal Kombat. I just played them at donut shops. And I remember when that came out and that got installed in one of the 7-Elevens uh, by my buddy's house. And we got saved our money and had roll of quarters. I'm like, okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna pick every single boss character from, and then we're gonna do mirror matches. And well, you know, they weren't called mirror matches. They were just, you know, same, but you know, Mortal Kombat. Um, did the term mirror match and what we're gonna do we're gonna pick you're gonna pick Balrog and I'm gonna pick Balrog and then you'll pick Vega and um, I remember we didn't know how to play the game I was a young kid and we button mash and I remember one guy taught us how to do the, um, the bison move the bison cycle crusher and my buddy just you know did that all day and I'm like oh god damn it and he never we never did that we never did like all oh, that we just we just picked bison and did the cycle crusher and messed me up but um, so then the years a year later or so like that this game Mortal Kombat comes out and that's the only thing kids are talking about at school this game called Mortal Kombat and I'm like Mortal Kombat yeah there's like this game this Mortal Kombat and there's like these ninjas and all this stuff and the thing is after the game after you beat them you could rip off their head or you could do a fatality on them and just all the kids all the dudes all the guys in the playground and in PE class that's all they could talk about is this game called Mortal Kombat. And I remember I ended up seeing it for the first time 
and um, thinking it was pretty cool. But I, at a young age, I'm like, you know what? This is a Street Fighter ripoff. And in the very first Mortal Kombat, I liked it, but I wasn't a super fan. I wasn't that much of a super fan for Mortal Kombat 1. Um, I remember playing it a lot. I used to go to Las Vegas, and I would play it a lot there. I, I like, And these are the days where arcade cabinets were everywhere. You could see them at um, 7-Elevens. You could see them at uh, donut shops. They were everywhere. And, um, you know, Magic Mountain. You'd go to Magic Mountain, and you would see the arcade cabinets and so forth like that. So... Um, I remember, and I, when kids were talking, when I finally saw it, I'm like, oh man, that's kind of like a, a, a Street Fighter ripoff, because that guy Kano has a, a Blanca role and stuff, and I remember thinking it was cool, but we're not that infatuated with it, to be honest. It was, it was neat, but I was still more of a Street Fighter fan, and, uh, but I remember, I, I, I played it, I didn't play it, like, that competitive, I remember... I, 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 but I, I had to have it when it came out for Super Nintendo. I, you know, I bought it. I, I really like. I mean, like I said, I liked Street Fighter and I liked, you know, NK. So, but when it came out for home consoles, I had to get it. I had the Super Nintendo. Uh, I was a bit disappointed with the blood, but the thing is, I was okay with it because it looked much better than the Sega Genesis. The Sega Genesis did have blood. But the music, the visuals, and everything of the Sega Genesis just looked awful. So I'm like, uh, I'll, I'll take the, the the censored version. Because it just looked better. And it wasn't until MK2 came along where I really just... Where I remember seeing it for the first time and my jaw hit the floor of the visuals. And the very first time I saw it was in Las Vegas at the MGM Casino. My parents would take, uh, take me to Vegas all the time because we lived in Southern California. It was a short drive, a very inexpensive vacation. Hotel rooms are cost next to nothing. Buffets were like $5 at the time. Um, my parents, you know, this was a long time ago in the 90s. They could leave you with a roll of quarters in an arcade and you'd be fine. And I remember, I saw it at the MGM Grand Hotel Casino, and the arcade probably had maybe at least 12 Mortal Kombat 2 machines lined up against the back wall, and each one of them were packed. Each one of them were just people going off. I remember one guy got up to Kintaro, and nobody was touching the other machine because they wanted to see endings and stuff. This was like one of the first times it was out in public. That wasn't like a beta, and I remember just being in like shock and awe of like, you know, that guy was facing Kintaro. Kintaro looked so badass. The visuals looked stunning. The cabinet was amazing, and people were just going off. And I was still kind of young, but I remember I'm like, oh my god, and playing and getting like, and getting wrecked and stuff like that. But I remember and then, then after that time, going back to school and again that's everybody everybody's topic at school was Mortal Kombat 2 and it was insane and there was no internet so everybody saw rumors everybody was talking about all these things and Mortal Kombat had so many hidden characters fights all kinds of things that people were just talking about rumors and I have friends till this day because of Mortal Kombat 2. Because we'd be in school and we would... Anybody who would talk to Mortal Kombat with me became my friend. So if we were in school and we were talking Mortal Kombat, we became friends. We were talking like, you know, there were secrets and, um, you know, that's when Ermac was in the um, startup screen. So arcades would like... If the machine got reset or the guy had to do something and kids were looking at the thing, see if they could see secrets and it said Ermax, well then that's when Ermax started. And like my buddy, I remember one of the rumors, he's like, yeah, there's a character with this name Ermac and he turns you into a duck. Fucking real story that I heard from my friend. And um, like, we just talked about secrets and all the kind of stuff. Like, 
Mortal Kombat 2 blew me away. And then from right then and there, that's the one I really started getting good at. That's the one I really started like, okay, I'm gonna go in and get good at this game. I'm gonna go and start being competitive. And by competitive, it's not like because there's eSports or FGC stuff. It's because you're in an arcade and you had a crowd behind you. You had a crowd. That was my Twitch when I was growing up, was the crowds of people watching you play this game. And you had to bring it. I mean, because, you know, if you were, you know, if you watch um, a high score girl, that's what it was like, but except in America. It was just like High Score Girl, but in America, and it was with Mortal Kombat and crowds of people. So if you were out there getting win streaks, and people were like, oh, damn, dude, look at this guy. You know, it was like, so that's when I really became competitive. Um, and it's been, in, I was infatuated with the game by the time Mortal Kombat 2 came out. I would be in high school, me and my buddies would draw flip books, we would draw characters from Mortal Kombat. We would do just whatever, like like I said, the majority of my friends I have today is because of Mortal Kombat, because we would talk about it in school. We'd be like, oh yeah, man, dude, did you see that? Oh, right, you know, I'll fight you, I'm this, that. I mean, <laughs> and I got to tell you the story of when I got Mortal Kombat 2 for Super Nintendo. But, um, so I remember just, you know, going to like before school, uh, waiting for the bus, there was a donut shop. I'd play as many games as I could at the donut shop and like fight people and like you know you get some people angry at you if you win like back in the day they'd be pissed they'd boom hit the machine and all that kind of stuff and stare you down and you're just a little kid and you're just like it doesn't beat me up but um yeah and um and mk2 i was a sub-zero main a uh, bit of a Jax main, but Jax was meant to beat the arcade ladder. Um, Katana, not Melina. I liked Melina, but her her execution was very hard compared to Katana's. But I always liked Melina because I'm like, man, she's cool. She's like the evil twin. She's neat. But yeah, I just remember, like I I grew up in arcades and everywhere. So we go to Vegas. I'd go to like. Um, Try to make my quarters land uh, uh, last as long as possible. So, growing up, I'd go to my buddy Manny, Manny's house, and he'd have this pizzeria that had Mortal Kombat 2, and then me and him would just go go at it. Um, and he's the one who taught me the um, the the jacks exploit on how to cheat the computer or how to get because how to use the computer's input reading against itself and he taught me like dude if you do this like i guess he saw it from someone there it's like if you duck and then jump back the computer's gonna follow you and i learned that at a young age and i'm like dang so i learned how to make my quarters last even longer until somebody played me i would just do my my um whatever that's called um my exploit until somebody played me i'd fight them and um yeah, yeah, that was it. Like, uh, but my buddy Manny, shout outs to Manny, he taught me the Mortal Kombat 2 one. I learned, I taught myself the Mortal Kombat 3 Smoke one. That one, made by me. Um, but uh, we haven't even gotten to the Mortal Kombat 3 legacy yet. But um, yeah, man, like going to just arcades and having that big crowd, you had to get good. And you had to put on a show, do a fatality, Get flawless, just do some cool things, and people would just ah, oh. and it was just neat, and that's why I love streaming on Twitch. But so Mortal Kombat 2 is huge in arcades, and it was coming out on console. And my dad used to work in this recording studio, and there was a mom and pop shop, um, video game arcade store, and Mortal Kombat was coming out. And um, this was a mom and pop store. So I remember I used to go there a lot when my dad worked there, when my dad would take me to work and I'd talk to the, the owner and stuff like that. And he's like, hey man, we got Mortal Kombat 2 coming out, um, you know, like next week. And I'm like, wait, that game doesn't come out for like, you know, like almost two weeks. And he's like, oh yeah, you know, like for some reason you could pre-order it. 
back before pre-ordering was a thing. He's like, yeah, man, if you pre-order your copy here, you know, uh, he's like, we'll give it to you a few days early. And I'm like, what? And so and I remember my dad worked that day and we got the game maybe two days before it came out. Two days. And that was huge. That was humongous to get a game way before because it was like Mortal Kombat 2 September 12th or something like that right when it came out for Super Nintendo over the consoles and I remember getting in like on like two days before street date and I was it was the best day of my effing life it was the best day to have that copy before and I remember we got that copy and then just as soon as my dad rushing home the first thing I did put it in my Super Nintendo Put the volume full up blast. Call my friend Manny. And like his mom picked up. He's like, is Manny there? And he's like, oh yeah, you know, Manny's here. And then he gets Manny on the phone. I'm like, hey Manny, listen to this. And I put my phone to the freaking speakers. And he hears Mortal Kombat coming from my house. And he's like, how's that possible? I have the game. He hung up the phone and showed up 20, like 20 minutes later. And yeah, it was nuts, man. It was like... How is that possible? The game doesn't even come out yet. And dude, hung up the phone, was in my house 20 minutes later, and we're just going ham at the game. But um, yeah, man, it's just... But Mortal Kombat 2 is the game that literally started me being competitive. Like, Street Fighter was okay. I was still like, I just played it for fun. Um, you know, all the other bigger kids were better. Mortal Kombat 1 was like, hey, it's cool. You can do fatalities and Sub-Zero's cool. He's a blue ninja. I like him. But it's, it's kind of a Street Fighter ripoff, and then Mortal Kombat 2 comes out and changed my life. That's why you see this Mortal Kombat 2 poster. That's why you see the Mortal Kombat 2 one up. And I remember um, before arcade middle, um, before, uh, arcade one up was making Street Fighter things and all this kind of stuff. And I talked to them one of the at one of the booths, maybe at E3 or at Evo. And I remember I'm like, dude. If you guys get Mortal Kombat, make it the Mortal Kombat 2 cabinet. It's easily the most iconic of the three cabinets. Mortal Kombat 1 cabinet is pretty cool, but Mortal Kombat 2 cabinet is the most iconic and the best of all the cabinets. It, you know, Mortal Kombat 3 looks cool. It's with Shao Kahn and Sindel, but it looks like that artwork's on the side of a van. But the Mortal Kombat 2 art is fire it's got to do that and now there's the mortal kombat 2 arcade you know mortal kombat arcade uh, cabinet right there but man like i'm telling you that like mortal kombat 2 is where it just began where my obsession with fighting i used to draw all the mortal kombat 2 characters all the time i used to draw i drew baraka and that was my favorite like i drew him perfect and i used to put him like you know when your folders had the little sleeve and you can put your artwork dude drew characters all the time, did flip books, was obsessed, was ma majorly competitive with anybody in my school. Like, you want to go? Let's go. Meet me at the donut shop after, you know, or yeah, we'd go to Family Fun Arcade and Family Fun was just packed. I don't know if I have a picture of Family Fun to show you guys. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'll have to see if it's there, but um, yeah, man, like I would go family fun sometimes and the competition was fierce, man. I'm telling you, dude, shopping malls when I was a kid. Thank you for the follow. Shopping malls when I was a kid had arcades. So your mom would go to the mall, leave you in the arcade and you'd play Mortal Kombat over there and you'd beat up all the other kids who were shopping there. It was, it was a beautiful thing, man. It was a great time. But now we're going to talk about Molina because we made it to MK2. So we'll talk about the let's talk about the Molina legacy. My legacy will continue as we talk as we go on to the other MKs. But we made it to MK2, so we're going to talk about a little bit more of Molina. Yassi in the building. Sorry. So if I wasn't paying attention to chat, I was just having full screen. That way I can do my whole story and so forth because I love reading chat and I'll get. Um, I'll get like, be like, oh, yes. So, but that's going to be a whole video before 
Um, yeah, man. But, ah, uh, MK. So we made it to MK2. We made it to our girl right there, Melina. And um, now we're doing the Melina me legacy. And we'll, I'll, I'll talk about what made, how I choose my favorite character, how, uh, what made me use, what, like, what made me gravitate to characters and everything like that. Oh my God, Rainbow Edition at the mall. Yes, all that stuff, dude, all that stuff. But, um, tilts, man. Oh, just arcades, yeah, Aladdin's Castle, like all these arcade at the mall, man, were just, they were just good times to be a kid back in the day, right? If you loved video games and you go to the mall, it was great. You lo I loved going to the malls, why? Because they had toy stores and arcades. They were just, dude, they were great. And the, the malls, the arcades in the malls were fantastic. They were, a lot of them were, um, had like themes where there would be like tilt, they would be like space themed, or they'd be like Aladdin's castle and stuff. They were just great. But um, full screen again, guys, full screen. And I love you, chat. Um, so we're at Mortal Kombat 2 and and like the secrets of my how I choose my names and stuff like that. Um, and here's a secret: I choose characters that I'm comfortable with, um, that feel good when I use them. Um, and I remember I was very interested in Melina. She was very cool because I hold I like the whole evil twin thing. I liked how the characters in Mortal Kombat, you know, they had Sub Zero and Scorpion. And they, were both ninjas and now they had now there was Melina and there she is and um Kitana but I remember about Melina her execution was very difficult you had to hold high punch to throw her side but then you had to start playing like crab she had her roll which was back back down which wasn't a very easy motion to do on an arcade stick especially if you were younger and the telekick which was a pretty cool move but the thing is she was I mean, she's always been incredibly unsafe in the, in the games. Um, but then there was her sister, Katana. And Katana was much easier to use. Had devastating combos. Um, so did Melina. I mean, I always liked her, but I'm just like, dang it, man. I want to play Melina, but she's a lot more difficult. So I actually played Katana in MK2. I played Katana. Uh, Shang Tsung. I played Katana. Shang Tsung. Jax and Sub Zero with like a pocket Baraka, and um, but I wasn't a big, huge Molina player because I, I wanted to. She had cool combos, but she was definitely tough, especially with her move being hold high punch, which was which was tough. So yeah, that was my thoughts on her on MK2. But with that said. Let's get started playing some Molina and MK2. All right, guys. All right, I am gonna look up some of her fatalities. I remember one of her fatalities. I've kind of done a legacy a little bit with Eddie Gordo, but this is like a first like official legacy. I know it's from Max, so Max invented the legacy from what I know. I mean, well, he, he he does them so yeah um yeah but everything that melina does is unsafe let me go ahead and turn on let me all i know this is going to be a boss rage max is very well known for that but um, I'm pretty sure he's not going to do a Molina legacy. So, yeah. Because I know Max is very no well known. Very well known for... Um... Alright, chat. But here we go. Wish me luck. There we go. 